In this episode of Analyzing Finance with Nick, I'm going to be talking about power law principles, what it is and why do they matter just for investors and for people living in life generally. This the pure mathematical definition of a power law is a functional relationship between two entities when the relative change in one quantity results in the proportional change in the other independent of the original size of the original of the original quantities of whatever you're comparing to. Like the same example is say for if you have a square and you grow the sides of the square in three inches on each side, then the area of the square will be multiplied by a factor of nine. It's x basically it's how one the change in the x axis creates an exponential change in the y axis at a consistent exponential rate. So why does this matter to um, my viewers? Well, a distribution in the world of a lot of outcomes, whether it's financial outcomes, economic outcomes, or social outcomes, are not normal distributions, which is the standard bell curve, but they are Pareto distributions, which are power law type distributions and have therefore power law dynamics. Uh, this was not really quantified and formalized as an economic theory until Filfredo Pareto did in the late 19th century. But this idea is as old as almost the dawn of time. In fact, in the Gospel according to Matthew, there's this quote, Matthew 13, 12, where it says, For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have the abundance. But for those who have not, even what he has will be taken away. And basically it means is that uh, somebody who has good news happen to them is more likely to have more good news happen to them and it compounds. And something somebody who has something unfortunate happen to them generally means more misfortune is going to happen. And this is a sociological function that has been strongly evident throughout much of society. Just to put this in a more human example, say for example you're a young person, you do well on an exam. Because you do well on an exam, you go to a good college. Because you go to a prestigious university, you're going to get a better job. And because you have a better job, you have more social connections and better um, future job opportunities or entrepreneurial opportunities and therefore you'll make even more money and be more wealthy and therefore have more opportunities and more social connections and it spirals up. And let's so say you woke up on the wrong side of the bed that day and the same young person bombs this exam. And because they fail the exam, they go to a bad uni university and therefore they do not have the same th job opportunities. So they have a good job out of school, they have a poor job out of school. And because of that, they don't have the same connections or opportunities and so therefore their income is lower and because their income is lower they can't afford to live a basic living standards and so therefore they rack up debt and then a variety of other bad things happen so that's kind of the example of the Matthew principle in modern terms and the reason why it's called the Matthew principle is because it comes from Matthew thirteen twelve. Next, really, is the Pareto distribution itself. A uh, normal distribution is how things that are due to just pure um, random chance tend to be lay out. Like the example would be like height of men. Um, the average height of man in the United States is about five foot ten inches, which is about one hundred seventy-seven centimeters. Uh, I, so, or maybe 178 centimeters around there for my uh, foreign listeners and viewers. So, and basically the standard deviation is two inches. So 33% of the population will be between five foot eight and five foot 10. And another 33% of the male population will be from five foot 10 to six foot zero. And two standard deviations will cover 90% of the outcomes and three will be 99. 
And so that's what a normal distribution would look like. A Pareto distribution, on the other hand, is heavily skewed where most people have a below optimum outcome and then there is a very few who have a disproportionately favorable outcome. Uh, it's the classic Pareto distribution is 80-20 where 80% 80 of the spoils go to 20% of the participants and there have been academic studies to run like when you just do like a coin flip model I have to give credit to Jordan Peterson whereas I found this example and I'll put the link to his video on this um, to help explain it but uh, that if you just did enough coin flips and the, w the heads and tails and you did that just randomly random trades across a hundred people if you ran the, the experiment enough times it wouldn't be a normal distribution it would end up as a Pareto distribution just purely on chance and the world is not purely on chance so there's a skill element to it but even in things that have an element of skill and I'll get into luck versus skill in a future video like I read a really interesting book called the success equation by Michael Malbison who's a famous value investor and he goes into what is skill what is luck and how to win games that are predominantly variance based which is just a mathematical term for luck versus how to win games that are more skill based but that's too long to talk about in this video so let's get to the Pareto distribution example. So this is an image of 100 people. Let's just say among these 100 people, they have all collective net worth of a million dollars. So if this was evenly distributed, each person would have a net worth of $10,000 each. But this is not evenly distributed. Um, and if this was normally distributed, it really would depend on the standard deviation, so I can't give you the numbers for that. This is a Pareto distributed outcome. And the green box is the top 20% of people in the income scale. So all the green have a net worth combined of 800,000, and the remaining people outside the green box have a combined net worth of 200,000. So 200,000 divided by 80, they only have $2,500 net worth each on average, the bottom 80% of this distribution. Versus if it was even, it would be 10,000. So now within that top 20%, the top 20% have 80%. So of the 800,000 remaining, 640,000 is in the top five and the remaining 15 people um, actually no sorry it's the top four I, I messed up on the image here a little bit but the top four and so the remaining 16 would have an outcome of just um, within that the remaining um, 160,000 would be among them so so the people have a ten thousand dollar net worth of the remaining sixteen people, and the top four have six hundred and forty thousand combined. So the top twenty percent have what would be average in an evenly distributed outcome. That's I I find that interesting. I didn't realize that when I was running this model, but that's up how I guess the power of Pareto distribution. So now within the top four, and I'll be a little generous and actually make it the top five so we can have 20%. That's why I did it that way. One of them will have 80% of the remaining 640000 which is $480,000. So the guy in blue. The guy in blue has a $480,000 net worth. The remaining four people who have um, a combined 160000 net worth divide that by four, they have 40,000. So this actually just reason a little more generous than a pure Pareto just because 100 doesn't divide evenly three times. So in a Pareto model. So, the, so like in a normal distribution, everybody would have 10,000. 
But in a Pareto distribution of the net worth, you have 80 of them have 2,500, or and you have, and then the next 16 have 10,000, and then the remaining five, four, uh, remaining, and then the four have um, 40,000 each, and one has 480,000. So the one r really wealthy dude here, his his net worth is a multiple of 480 times what it would be in an evenly distributed and compared to the bottom 80%, 192 times the net worth of the bottom 80% of the distribution. So hopefully you caught up with me on that. So that shows you an example of how skewed things could get under a power law. And there's a lot of examples in the real world. Uh, ex the example Number one that I've found commonly cited is the success of men on online dating platforms. Uh, according to OKCupid, 80% of men are considered unattractive and people find this shocking. It's like, oh, uh, these women are incredibly shallow. That's a horrible thing. No, it's really it's just standard Pareto distribution. 20% of men are desirable to 80% of women. It's just, and then it keeps going up that way. So if you do get um, positive results on an online dating app and people respond to your, and your messages, congratulations, you're in the top 20% of men. Uh, you probably didn't even realize it. And then you know, even among those top 20%, 80% of the top 20% don't do as well. The top maybe 20%, 5% of men are really the ones who are crushing it because um, the dating market is a mostly Pareto distribution. I mean, the for men, it, I guess it's slightly more normal, the distribution, but it's not entirely normal. Um, the next one is household incomes. This is 2017 household incomes according to the census. It's, if it was a normal distribution, it would be a, a bell curve. But you know what it is, it's the, the red line is what it would be if it was a pure Pareto distribution. But it's pretty close. And it's like the example of the 100 people I said in the previous slide. Uh, income is skewed in a Pareto distributed outcome. Uh, so far more people um, have incomes below the mean household income, which is 86000 a year, the median is $25,000 lower than the mean, which is a sign of a Pareto distribution. Another one is for basketball fans. In the 2007-2008 season, the number of points in an NBA season, 20% of the players scored 80% of the points. And it kept going in that slope. And the, uh, this was the top was Kobe Bryant was the put up the most points of any player because this was during his MVP season and yeah like Kobe Bryant had more points per game than probably the entire 11th through 12th man roster of 30 teams so it's 60 players um, probably so that kind of shows you the power and then sport and the last one is the financial markets uh, Basically, from 1993 to 2015, you had 20% of the stocks, which be 80% of the market cap in the blue line. In fact, in the era of FANG and big tech, this has probably become even more extreme. So this is like a more normalized. It was more Pareto than Pareto, for lack of a term. And the top 20% of stocks and sales, um, top 20% of stock had 80% of the sales too. So this, this was an investing. The winners win more and the losers lose more or they go bankrupt. And that's why you see a lot of the indices perform much stronger than individual stocks do is because a lot of individual stocks fail and the Pareto winners compound. But unlike some other Pareto distributions, and actually, never mind, a lot of Pareto distributions apply to this. It's not always the same people that's the one thing to not feel down about yourself when looking at this. You're like, oh man, if I'm not in the winners already, that means I'm going to be one of the losers. No. In a given year, 
these outcomes can change completely different. Kobe Bryant did not, does not lead the NBA in scoring every year. He hasn't in over a decade. Uh, so that's one example. And a lot of the, the, the household incomes, it's different people who are every year in the top versus the bottom. So, and same with the stocks. It's not always the same 20% of stocks. Like the Fang Air is kind of an, not an exception to that, but it's not always the top 20. So it's not always the same companies that are the top 20% of stocks with 80% of the market cap and 80% of the sales. So that's to be the optimistic side, but just as an observation, this is kind of how society works that people don't really notice. It's kind of hidden but in your face at the same time. So now what? What do we make of this? Well, there's I, I kind of mentioned that in the previous slide. Uh, just be aware of where power laws are present in your life and in the financial markets and in your investments. And don't play against the odds that the power laws would dictate. And you need to play the game, the games of chance, which I'll do in a future video in a fashion that helps you win power law games. Thank you for watching.